Hello friends and welcome. In this video I will build a French Delta U fighter bomber, the Dassault Mirage 2000N. For the build I chose the 1 to 72 scale Heller kit. This kit reminds me of my childhood because I built it with my dad when I was like 10 years old. In fact these 1979 moldings are the same moldings like before. For such an old model the moldings look decent. Panel lines could be deeper and there are some areas where the panel lines are raised. That happens very often with old kits like this. Unfortunately there are no cockpit details. The kit includes an ASMP nuclear missile, two large fuel tanks and infrared matramagix. The other disappointment is the clear cockpit canopy. It's from one piece. So I have no option as to build it with a closed canopy. The water slide decals look good and in good quality. The instruction manual is simplified but easy to follow. It includes 5 work steps. The color guide includes only a paint scheme for one machine and that is the Mirage of the Lafayette Squadron. Very well then, let's see what I can do about it. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. As usual I began with the cockpit details. The ejection seats are simplified so I modify them with copper wires and seat belts from a rubbery 3M masking tape. For gluing the details I use Loctite super glue. There are no cockpit details, so I'm at least trying to create panels from a thin plastic sheet. The cockpit will be closed, so these details will be barely visible. I dry fit the cockpit tab a couple of times to fit the details. When it's done, I glue the cockpit tab into place. When dry fitting both fuselage parts, I figure out that the fit isn't the best. Most visual fitting imperfections are on the instrument covers. I had to glue both fuselage parts together and fill the gaps with putty. After it dried out, I sand in the excess putty with a sand stick. Taking a little break from the exhausting cockpit sanding. Let's work on the wings. I decided to cut the flaps out and glue them back in the park position. All I need is a steady hand and patience.
When the cutting is done, I sand the edges of the flaps and glue them in a part position. Let's get back to the cockpit details. I paint the ejection seat with a paintbrush. Once again, I use my approved vehicle acrylic paint. A proper dry brush is always needed. After the small details are painted, I'll see them with a layer of glossy varnish coat. Next, I highlight the details with a black pen and line wash. And I remove the excessive wash with a cotton bud. At the end, I glue the ejection seat, control stick, paint the heads-up display and seal the cockpit details with a layer of a matte varnish. That is the maximum I can do about the cockpit details. Now I glue the cockpit canopy and prepare the model for putty filling. For such an old model, most of the fit is good. The biggest gaps were on the bottom side of the fuselage and air intakes. Other gaps were barely visible, so I decided to fill them up with putty and immediately clean them up with a cotton bud.
the Mr. White putty's drying time is about 5 hours. After that, I carefully sanded the excessive putty with a smooth PC hundred sandpaper. The last step before the paint job is to mask the cockpit canopy with masking tape and liquid mask. The model is ready for priming. After priming, I highlight all pen lines with a black pre shading. Since I've got black paint in my airbrush, I decided to paint the radar comb as well. Next, I paint the wheel wells, landing gear and the exhaust nozzle. After these details are painted, I mask it with masking tape to prevent them from overpainting. For the camouflage, I will use Gunze Sangyo Mr. Color C305 Grey, C308 Light Coast Grey and C120 Olive Green. I began to paint the camo with the olive green. The paint itself has a denser pigment. It must be thinned down at least in a 1 to 5 ratio. I take my time and apply the paint very slowly. I don't want to waste any time, so I created a post shaded areas right away. The easiest way is to mix the camo paint with a couple of drops of white paint. The second applied paint is the C305 Grey. This paint is very good and don't need any extra thinning as the olive green. 1 to 3 ratio can do the trick.
And once again, I'm creating the pole shading right after the camera applying. The underbelly is painted with the C308 white ghost grey. The camouflage painting is done. Now I paint the small details with a thin paintbrush. Ok, the next step is to apply a gloss varnish coat. Not only I seal the paint job, but I also prepare the model for decals. And this is where the big disappointment began. The Heller decals are terrible. Sorry for saying that but they are the one of the worst decals on the market. They are very fragile, like to tear and don't stick to the model. I had to use lots of fixer to keep them in place. Even the softener chemicals don't help them. One big disaster. Next, I seal the decals with a glossy varnish coat. Let's begin with the weathering. First, I apply a black panel line wash from Tamiya. And quickly remove it with enamel thinner. For more weathering, I need a matte surface. Ah yes, my favorite part, oil weathering. As usual, I weathered the model by mixing black and burnt umber oil paint. Let's give the model a final varnish ceiling. After it's done, I remove the liquid mask from the cockpit canopy and go all details like the landing gear, fuel tanks and the weapons.
and the Heller's 172 scale Dassault Mirage 2000N is finished. Although the kit is quite old, the build was pleasant. I hope you liked this video build. Please subscribe to my channel, like or leave a comment down below. If you're interested to see more of my work, join me on Facebook, Instagram or Telegram. Thank you guys and see you next time.